Are you allowed to dropship on Amazon? There's a lot of misinformation when it comes to dropshipping. So in this video, I want to give you a definite answer to that question. So let's get started. Hey guys, it's Joe from Profit Wolf. And as you know, in this channel, we teach you the truth. We've been selling on Amazon for several years now and everything we advise you to do, we are doing it ourselves. So to be totally transparent, we are not trying to sell you a course. We are a software company, which means we build applications and tools for Amazon, which means that ultimately your success is our success. Because if you become a successful Amazon seller, then you will stay our client for longer. So all the advice that we give you is genuine and tested and all the tools and applications that we build, we also use them because we are not only a software company, we're also Amazon sellers. So it's in our best interest to build a good ecosystem for everyone. Now let's look at the official Amazon policy regarding dropshipping. So let me just pull it up here. Dropshipping or allowing a third party to fulfill orders to customers on your behalf is generally acceptable. If you intend to fulfill orders using a dropshipper, you must always. And then Amazon lists you all their conditions. Now, I'm not going to read everything. I'm going to summarize. But the first line, their first condition is actually their overarching rule from which everything comes. So their main rule here is that you must be the seller of record of your products. And then the two main rules that come from this rule is that when you sell an item that you drop ship on Amazon, it cannot contain any invoices or any price from the previous supplier, from your supplier. That's the first rule. And second rule, the product cannot contain any branding from your supplier or your retailer. Let me recap. First rule, when you ship something to a customer using a retailer or your supplier, it cannot have an invoice from that supplier. Why? Because let's say that your customer paid something for $40 on Amazon and you buy it as a seller, you buy that item for $25. Now, you bought it for $25, you send it to the customer who paid $40. If there is an invoice in that box, it's going to be the price that you as a seller paid. So the customer is going to receive an invoice for $25. So you see the problem here. That's a big problem because the customer is obviously going to receive that. He's not going to be happy. He's going to complain. And that ultimately will result in you getting a suspension. So that's the first condition. Second rule is that the box of your item, the box of the item that you ship to your customer, cannot have any branding from your supplier. This means that if you, for example, buy your items at Walmart, if you drop ship from Walmart and the customer receives a box and the box says Walmart, well, that's against Amazon's terms and conditions. Now I have three packages here that come from three different retailers and we're going to look at them together. So. By the way, these are all French retailers because I live in France and I do almost all of my drop shipping from French retailers to French customers. So first box here, as you can see, clearly it states the name of my retailer of the place where I bought this. So that's the first thing. Does that violate Amazon's terms and conditions? Yes, it does. Now let's look at what's inside the box. So I'm not going to take it out, but there's an item. And basically when you take everything out, there is no invoice. Um, there is no previous price. So the price is not shown on the bar, on the, on the product. And there is no invoice for this product. So this product here only violates Amazon's um, guidelines in one way is that it has the, the branding of the previous retailer. Now, Second product, let's take this guy here. So another retailer in France, again, the box here does not have 
any branding. So it's a generic cardboard box. So, so far, so far it doesn't violate Amazon's dropshipping terms and conditions. Now, if we look inside, there's a product, but problem, there's an invoice. An invoice for the price that I paid, that I as a seller paid for the product. So this retailer, you cannot drop ship directly to Amazon. And now I have a third retailer for you. It's this guy here. Now, box, no branding, no nothing. Okay? Product inside. It's summer, it's hot, so I bought a fan. There is no branding, no previous price. You see, there is no stickers with the price. And inside the box, there is no invoices. I don't know if you can see, but you trust me. There's no invoices. So this retailer here is ideal to drop ship from the retailer directly to the customer. So if you want to be 100% compliant with Amazon's terms and conditions, you cannot ship from the first two retailers that I showed you. First one, it had the branding on the box. You can do that. And second one, it had an invoice in the box. The third one is the only retailer you can use to drop ship directly. Now, that's if you want to be 100% compliant with Amazon's terms and conditions. Most drop shippers on Amazon, they still send items where the box has the branding on it. I myself and all the users, or almost all the users of our dropshipping function, they do this. And so far, none of them has been suspended by Amazon. And the reason is very simple, is because when the customer gets the product, generally they don't really pay attention to the box. They open it and they get the product. If they don't see that the price is lower than what they paid because there's no invoice, that's totally fine. Now, if they ever wonder about uh, the branding on the box, well, you can always tell them that you used an old box that you had at your home to ship the item. That's always something you can say. Second thing you can say is that you're using another retailer's logistic. You know, there's Amazon Prime. Well, in France, we also have a lot of different um, companies that do the same as Amazon Prime. Well, you can say your items are stored over there and you just use that logistical place to ship the items. There's always excuses basically to do that. Now, I understand that this violates the policy, but out of almost 1000 orders that I placed, and that's just me, I didn't get any single complaint. And that's just me again. So imagine all the other sellers doing that. Nobody ever got any trouble. So to summarize, if you want to comply 100%, then you can only send stuff where the box has no branding and where there is no invoice in the box. If you want to do something that everybody else does and has never got any trouble with, but that you must understand that it violates the terms and conditions, then you can still afford to send stuff that has the branding on the box, but no invoice. The invoice in the box is always a big no-no. If you still want to be very safe, if you want to play it extremely safe and be compliant with the terms and conditions and still ship from every retailer, there's something you can do. It's what I call a hybrid between arbitrage and dropshipping is you're going to place an order for your item and you're going to get it either at your place or you're going to send it to a prep center or something like that. And either you or that prep center will remove any packaging that shows that you're not the seller and any invoices that show that you're not the seller and will re just repackage everything and then send that to your final customer. So that's a solution you can do, but you have to understand that it's going to be a little more expensive because you're going to have to ship that to one place and then ship it again to another place. And it's going to be time consuming as well for you because you're going to have to do all of that. But it's something you can do. That being said, I still recommend that you do the solution that every dropshipper or 90% of dropshippers on 
Amazon do, which is just take a retailer that doesn't send the invoices and ship to your final customer. So that's it for the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe to the channel. And I also want to invite you to join our exclusive and private Facebook group for Amazon sellers. We don't actually accept everybody in the group. So when you join, there's going to be three small questions. And in order to be part of the group, you have to answer those questions. And then you'll see that there's going to be a lot of sellers like you, like-minded people who are crushing it every day. And you're going to be able to ask your questions. You're going to be able to help other people as well if you're more advanced. So I really invite you to do so. It's a great community. And with that being said, I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.